Now, Coach Hunter, uh, for some of our, uh, our young ballers, both football and basketball, actually, kind of share uh, the background behind the Flight Academy prep. Okay. Um, so the, the background behind the Flight Academy is uh, uh, Chris Wright, who is the founder. Um, he is one of eight children. Um, so as we all know, you know, one of eight single family home, it was a little of a struggle. Um, he was fortunate to make it. Uh, he went on to play college basketball at University of Dayton. Um, went from University of Dayton, uh, walked on with Golden State, um, played a little a couple years at Golden State, uh, left Golden State, went to Milwaukee, um, left Milwaukee, go to Toronto, and then he ended up at Oklahoma. Uh, spent some cu couple years in the G League, went overseas. So he came back in uh, – he came back and we were doing camps. He always wanted to give back as a young young man. He always talked about giving back to his community. So when he came back, uh, he would just go ahead and and uh, do a lot of camps. Well, started a uh, connected with some old fellow teammates, and they went on to start a. Um, what we would call the AAU program. Um, two years ago, the COVID hit. And when COVID hit, uh, it destroyed that class of 2021. Mm -hmm. Those were our first graduates of um, Team Flight AAU program. So they couldn't get a lot of scholarships. So um, after talking with some fellow uh, pro players that have went on to start prep schools or uh, prep programs, he decided to go up to venture out into the prep program. So when we ventured out, uh, that's where the Flight Academy started, um, just working with uh, young men that weren't really uh, recruited as they would have liked. So this became an opportunity for us to go ahead and, and provide something for young men in our area. So this was our first year at the Flight Academy. Most of them young men were all um, locals. Well, after that, um, Chris has two brothers that played in the NFL. Uh, Nicholas Grigsby played at University of Pitt, and he played in – uh, several on several different NFL teams, but he praises himself on playing with the uh, in with the Patriots. He's got a Super Bowl ring with the Patriots, nice. and then uh, Bam Bradley. He played with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so when we would talk, everyone talks about the basketball side, but of course, you know, coming from a family where they're athletic. Um, he said, hey, what are we going to do about football? So mm -hmm. we reached out and we started football. This will be our first year. Um, we are involved in the uh, post-grad athletic association. So the we're in that MPGAA. This is, I believe, their second year in existence. It's a national post-grad football program. So um, we – there's two different divisions, and we play uh, 10 games. Um, this year, we're excited. Um, we were chosen. We're going to play against the Navy uh, reserve team or JV team. So that, you know, that's special within itself, being able to go out to the Navy. We get to go to a uh, to one of their the big Navy games and everything, but we'll play on that same field. So that's, that's a big thing, but it's also a chance for the young men to be recruited 
um, from one of the armed services, and that's always a good thing to serve the country. Now, now, Coach, so um, is, is, is the Flight Academy prep accepting, um, like, not so local football talent, or are they only focused on guys out of the Dayton, Ohio area? No, we're accepting everyone. Oh, <laughs> so but it everything started local because, of course, when you start your program, you kind of, you know, we don't have housing at this point. So we're working on uh, housing. However, for our football program, we just leased uh, two um, four-bedroom apartments. So we're going to be able to oh. house 16 kids. Um, we also have the option um, to to how to find more housing in the same area. So um, we are working with the apartment complex that um, works right outside of Wright State University. So they were able to give us the opportunity to to lease some of their um, their their dormitory or apartments near the campus area. However, our young men will go, will not go to Wright State. They will go to um, Sinclair Community College. But okay. it gives us a chance to give them a, a kind of a dorm feel, um, but also understand what they're here for. Uh-huh. Excellent. Now, now, Coach Hunter, with, with basketball, with basketball obviously being more of, of an international sport, um, kind of describe a little bit more about your post-grad um, basketball program and what recruiting is looking like right now. So our post-grad um, is, is very well open. Um, we're recruiting. Um, we have Obi Brunson and uh, Justin Kennerly right now who are – pretty much committed. Um, they're going to do a commitment together. Um, so uh, they, those are the only two right now that we have committed. We have a couple kids that have shown a high level of interest um, and it looks very promising. Um, we're going to have 10 athletes is what we want to scholarship I mean, to actually play on this in this team, we'll play a 40 to 45 game schedule. Um, oh, wow. We I like that. We have been uh, asked just as of late. Um, we played last year in the Prep South Conference. This year we will um, play in a couple different conferences. Um, we, we typically played a lot of colleges last year. Um, this year we want to play on the, because of the post-grad situation, the post-grad situation is getting, uh, it's very competitive, but it's actually opening up. So we want to, to start to play a little bit more on the post-grad side. However, we are going to attend a lot more showcases. Last year we did not do a lot of showcases but we were still fortunate to place 10 of the 12 kids that wanted to play at the next level. The other two decided that uh, this was a little more of a grind than they wanted. So they chose the school route. Um, both were both very academically sound. So they have full ride scholarships to one to Ohio State University and the other one to the University of Dayton. Okay. Two major college programs in the area, you know, in the state of Ohio. Um, and coach, um, I get quite a few DMs, uh, young ball players, uh, especially out in South Sudan and even South Sudanese kids that are in other countries like uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and um, Kampala, Uganda, and, and some of the questions are actually pretty similar. They pretty much want to ask, what's like a, a day in the life? What does a typical routine of a student athlete look in a prep school environment? So kind of break that down for, for these youth. 
So for the uh, for the flight academy, ours is a little different. We treat every kid just like um, a college athlete. Okay. Um, so what we we do, every kid goes to um, goes as I said, they go to Sinclair. However, um, it's a typical. It's a eight o'clock wake up. You go to uh, you you wake up at eight o'clock then we go on to uh work out work out from typically eight to ten um you get your you get all of all of your training done after your training what we do is every kid is sent to Orion is a partner of our and what at Orion specialized training such as like to ensure wait hold oh, oh no coach coach Hunter, your your audio your audio faded out for a few seconds. Repeat that please. Okay now Hello. You froze up uh, for the past like five, six seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay, now I can hear you. Okay, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm actually in a garage where we're actually at <laughs> Ohio State uh, spring game today. With the oh, family. you were back so, Buckeyes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. A big Buckeye fans. Um. So, uh, can you hear me? I want to make sure that I'm still being heard. Yes, sir. I can hear you loud and clear now. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, do our training. As I stated, they go on to uh, Orion. They do any physical therapy. They go to lunch. Typically, lunch is from 11 to 12, 11 to 1. Then they'll go to their school. And then after school, they kind of get about a two-hour rest, and we go back to individuals. So um, they do a lot of individual training in the evening. And then we have open shoot. And after open shoot, um, we typically, from open shoot, we end up going to, they go home and then they play their games or what have you. And then they go ahead and just call it, uh, call it quick for the night and we start the day back over. Weekends are typically free. We take, we normally take them to local games um, and things of that nature just to to kind of uh, just allow them to, you know, to, to have an experience in our area. So, so that's typically where we're at on our, on our days. Okay. And, and coach, um, to, to, to close out this episode, one big thing that I wanted you to share what are some of the biggest barriers with um, running a, a, a prep a prep school with, with a basketball program? Some of the okay. some of the biggest barriers. Uh, I would say the biggest barriers um, for us it it's really the understanding. Um, the problem is a lot of young men and young women now are being misguided on prep versus junior college. Um, we had a young man just yesterday work out one of our young men. He worked out for a Division I junior college. Um, and the college actually told us, told him.